As of all, this is Lazy Boy and welcome to today's video guys. Today I want to help you guys solo the Special Operations Mastery 3. Yes guys, this is going to be the highest difficult content, but it's going to be so easy. You guys are going to be breezing to this, getting it completed in under, under 10 minutes, under 15 minutes the most. And the cool thing about this is that you're going to be able to get the end game currency monedas, which is going to help you buy some of the best weapons currently found in the game. So if all of this sounds like something you're definitely interested, a like would be greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on all your notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. All right, so let's talk about why you want to do Master 3. The reason you want to do Master 3 is because that is the highest amount of monedas you're going to be getting able to get. You're able to get about 700. You'll probably get more if you do certain objectives, but since we're theoretically farming, you're going to be able to come out with 700 monedas every single time you do this. And like I said, you should be able to get this done in under 10 minutes. Now, I have a video that I did earlier this week, which goes over the build that I'm running here. So I'm going to link it on the description and also in the annotation. So you guys could definitely go check that out and see what build we're running. So really quick, just to give you guys a little heads up. Uh, for the, we're running two sets of gears for the first one. The first part of the mission, we're just going to be running the parkour gear. That gear is primarily going to make us run fast. And like I said, on my other video, I explained how it works, what you need to do. So you definitely want to check that out when you get done with this video. So in the main stages here, we are not going to be fighting any enemies. The main thing we want to do is we want to get as fast as we can to the visitor center. So it's not a matter of exploring. It's just a matter on how fast we usually go here. Usually I like to take down, I usually go down the middle. The, I just do a straight beeline to the visitor center. The reason being is because most of the uh, NPCs that are walking around or the enemies are usually walking around like on the opposite side. So they're going to be either a lot on the left hand side, a lot on the right hand side, some scattered in the middle. But if you take this route and you go straight down the middle until you bump yourself into the, uh, you know, the blue dinosaur, then you guys should be effectively get there the fastest way because it's kind of just beelining it straight into there. So the main thing we're doing here is we are sliding and we're making sure that when we slide, we get that boost of speed that we want. And we're also jumping. The jumping does help a little bit. It does get you longer distance. If you see a little red icon, like for example, on the mini map, if you see the little red circle, just, you know, avoid it and try to move a little bit to the side so you guys won't get detected and won't get shot. Now, it doesn't really matter if you get shot because you're running so fast that you're not going to be able to absorb any damage. So it makes it really effective. Now, another thing I, I did talk about my other video uh, that you're probably going to want to watch is the weapons I'm currently using because that's going to give you a better understanding of what weapons you should bring in here. And I also explain why. So it's definitely very important that after you watch this video, you go check out that video and try to, you know, replicate uh, uh, some of the builds that I have down here. What I'm doing, guys, is I'm actually lobbing grenades. And these grenades, I explained also in my other video, are mostly focused so I can know where the ads are at, right? So I know where the enemies are at. I can know how to approach this. Now, there's two things you could do here if you want to speed this and do it really, really fast. Just look for the lieutenant because I'm pretty sure if you've done this already, you kind of know what you were doing. But the main thing here is kill the lieutenant and steal and steal the uh, the PG, right? So that's the main focal point you want to do here. I like to clear as many ads as I possibly can just because I don't want to get um, overwhelmed whenever I'm trying to pick up the PGA because you are in some sort of animation when you're doing it. So what I try to do is I try to kill as many enemies. Now, the one of the annoying things are the flamethrowers guys in here because you constantly have to be... Uh, if they put you on fire, you got to put the fire down so that's the main thing that you want to focus on taking out the fire guy he is annoying and then you can focus on just getting the uh, card from the uh from the sergeant and uh once you kill a lieutenant i should say rio uh compost and then once you have it you don't have to kill the rest of the ads you just got to make sure uh you know you, there isn't there isn't enough ads there to uh take you out so once you kill the ads you're ready to go just double check that you don't have no one else that's going to come here and burn your life while you're actually doing this and once you have that already, you're good to go. You're going to be able to pick up the uh, PG device. And now, after you pick up the PG device, it's back to doing the same thing we did to actually get here. So the main thing we want to do here, as soon as we grab it and the animation is completed, we want to start heading out. Even if there's ads, avoid them, run out, and get at it quickly as we possibly can. Now, what we're going to be doing here is, guys, we're going to be beelining it as fast as we can. But remember, the thing with the PG and, and Mastery 3 is that the timer is a little bit faster because it starts heating up a lot quicker. What you're going to want to do is you're going to have to stop by two locations where there's water. Now, when you stop to the first location, which is going to be the first kind of dinosaur spot, uh, which is the, has the blue, dra uh, the blue dragon, <laughs> the blue dinosaur, this is the first stop we're going to be doing. This is just so we could avoid it burning really, really fast. 
Now, one tip I want to give you guys, even if you don't have the, um, you know, the PG out, you're going to know when it's getting super hot. It'll give you a 10 minute, war a 10 second warning, sorry. And then you'll also know uh, when it's cooled. So it's very important that you understand how to identify that. So when it's about to blow up, it'll start counting in Spanish. It'll say like, ocho, siete, seis, cuatro, cinco. I think I messed those up. Uh, tres, dos, uno. And then, um, you know, once you had like a two or three, you know you got to get it to water. Now, when you are at a location and you're trying to cool it off, it's gonna it's gonna start uh, you know cooling it down. You can hear a little bit of, of the uh, of the sound, but once it's cool, it'll do like three beeps. It'll go beep 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 beep, and then that way you know that it's already cool. So it's very important that you understand that because sometimes you're gonna be fighting with your gun and you're not gonna know um, if it's cooled or not because you know you have your gun out. So it's very important you understand those two uh, signs of when it's cool and when it's about to blow up. So here's the second location where we're going to go ahead and stop for water. This location right here is really important because you don't have to uh, move any sort of thing around to make sure the water's there. And once it's cooled here, it's pretty much easy after that, guys. If you get flashbang, just go straight. Don't worry about it. Just keep running. And once again, we're going to take almost the same route we took for to get here as opposed to going just straight down the middle. We're going to do a quick little right. Uh, once we get up to the uh, up to this dinosaur right here, the reason being is because we want to avoid bullets and getting shot, and we also want to avoid uh, some enemy or guards that I believe they're on the uh, left hand side. Right as soon as you get um, up on here, so even though I am doing this right here, you could theoretically from the run that I did, which was about 13 minutes, you could pretty much knock down like about well, I would say like one or two minutes, even even three minutes uh, from the run if you do everything correctly. I just wanted to make sure I put out the video so you guys could see how easy it is. So once you guys get out of the park, there's going to be two little dinosaurs that are going to have you to cool down the water. First thing you do as soon as you get out of here is cool it down. Once it's cooled down, you're going to want to change the gear because remember, you're running a different gear set. So you're going to want to change the gear. Now, the only thing I changed from my previous video uh, from this is uh, the gloves. That's the only thing I changed. Um, basically, uh, everything is like the other build. The only thing I added was the gloves that actually give you a little bit more damage to... Um, to vehicles or helicopters, which are called the uh, the rider gloves, and those are going to be uh, very effective because we have a total, I think, a total of four helicopters or three helicopters in this run. So the first thing on this run, guys, you're always going to get a vehicle coming in first. You want to take out that vehicle as quickly as you can because that's automatically, ooh, uh, that's automatically two enemies that you're killing right off the bat that you don't have to deal with. Now, one helpful tip that I want I like doing here is the enemies are mostly always scattered in, in this map. So it's a bit annoying tracking some of them down because some of them just run off like crazy. What you're going to want to do is throw those grenades that I mentioned in my previous video, which was the ones that let you know and ping where the enemies are at. Because those particular enemies are, are going to get pinged on the map so you know exactly where to go to kill them. Because remember, the timer is not how fast you kill this, it's just how fast you kill enemies. The faster you kill the enemies, the faster it's going to be able to complete the, uh, the actual mission here. So there are two main, actually three most annoying things in this one. The particular one, of course, the choppers and the vehicles. Number two, it's going to be the, the guys with the, the the rocket launchers, the RPGs. And number three, it's going to be the guys with the fire. Those are going to be extremely annoying. And one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you remember the cues for the uh, for the PG. Because if you don't know the cues, you're going to be kind of rushing and you're going to be doing uh, like you're gonna probably going to start cooling it off when you're not supposed to. So it's extremely important that you understand the cues because those keys are going to tell you it's time to cool this without you having to kind of be checking or looking at the pg every single time so remember be patient don't stress out just keep it cool and you should be fine when you're doing this now there are one thing that i do want to let you guys know if you guys have been playing the other ones who haven't been mastery three is that on this one you only get three lives so three lives is it if you die three times you have to pretty much start all over so that's one thing to keep a note Another helpful tip that I like to give here is when I like to go and cool down the uh, PG, I usually throw throw down a healing grenade because as I'm cooling it down, I know I'm going to be getting shot. And since I'm going to be getting shot, I want to be healing uh, while that shot is coming in. So that was, those guys are annoying guys. So make sure the, you prioritize the guys with the RPGs, you prioritize the flamethrowers and prioritize the vehicles because if you take out the vehicle as soon as it's coming towards you guys, you're easily, easily reducing the amount of enemies that are in the field because there's either two to three to four people within the vehicle. So that should be very helpful. So prioritize the vehicles, guys. And then, you know, you have you don't have to deal with the people shooting you down with the uh, 
the mounted turret. So remember the cues, remember the cues, and then prioritize the flamethrowers, RPGs, and the vehicles. Now, I personally like to run the Supremo that has the uh, that has the uh, what you call it, the rocket that it launches out. It's just an extra uh, for me personally. It's just an extra option to take down choppers because I am running the bow to take down the choppers, but it just makes it a little bit easier, especially since it lets you um, kind of be able to get it, get them down. And as soon as they launch out, even if the chopper's pretty far out, you're able to continue doing your own thing after that because you already know they're gonna automatically hit because they track and lock onto the chopper. So it's really effective um, for that one. I know a lot of people like to use the, um, the what you call it, the Medico, the, the Medic one. Uh, that one's good. But I believe it doesn't really help you out as much as just giving you that extra life. And you theoretically, if you run the build that I showed you guys in my previous video, you guys should be able to get this completed. So once again, we throw down our grenades so we can know exactly where the enemies are. We have these guys on these vehicles. As you see, as soon as they're hopping out, they were going to be hopping out. We were able to take them out because they were just about to die here. So we get, get rid of the most annoying ones. And then I think we have a flamethrower here as well. So we need to take out. And um, once you get rid of the annoying ones, the other ones are just pretty much going to be pea shooters. They're just going to be shooting you with the um, with regular gun, so it's not too much of a big deal. But the dudes with the with the uh, RPGs and the flames are annoying because if you get if you get flamed, it's so annoying that you have to constantly be taking it out. You could theoretically swap on some gloves here. You know the gloves that make the make you get rid of the fire. Those could probably work on here. You know I haven't tested them out, but I do like to have the uh, ability to do a little bit more damage to the choppers. But I think actually those might be really effective since you're constantly getting burned uh, to be able to put out the fire without you having to do any sort of animation. I think those might actually be a thing and we're probably going to have to test those out uh, whenever we do another run. Not on this particular map, but on a different map. So see, this is why it's extremely important that those grenades start pinning where the enemies are at because once you know where the enemies are at, all you have to do is just pretty much hunt them down. And it's pretty, pretty easy after that because then you just get that little red um, circle on the map and then it's kind of you have to go find something they're hiding behind a building they're up on the on a ledge and you don't see the ledge so it's it's it gets a little bit annoying so remember keep your composure and do as much damage as you possibly can and always keep track and listening to the cues of the pg because that's going to be extremely important because here we're here yeah we they were so annoying that i even had to use my uh my uh supremo because it was like yo bro let me let me go cool this down this thing's about to blow up so because I'm, I'm listening to the cues right so here, if I would have been able to get rid of the uh, the flamethrower guy as faster than I did, definitely would have been able to knock down like a minute or you know a little bit of a shorter time, because the flamethrowers are super super annoying. So that is what you want to do. Cool this down. As soon as you cool it down, then it's time for you to go fight. That's why those grenades are so important because those grenades are going to keep you healthy, uh, but, and as you guys are cooling it down. And for some reason, like if you saw right there, I got overwhelmed on one side. You're just going to want to make sure you go to the other side, cool it down there. And then just re-engage the enemy and you guys should be good to go here once we do that so once we have that done it's just a matter of tracking down the enemies and that's why i was getting bombarded there because there was a um there was a dude with the rocket launcher and there was a dude with the uh, flamethrower that was just overwhelming and annoying as heck so see see these are like the ones i'm telling you this guy that's hiding back here it's you're gonna get a big red circle you're gonna I mean i know exactly what's going on and that's what i love those grenades because they tell you exactly where the enemy's at and how to kill them and this is the last unit right here. I think he was just running away. Oh, no, I think we got two more vehicles, right? Okay. So we got two more vehicles, and we got a two for right here because we got both vehicles at the same time. And that kind of took down, like, at least, I would say, a total of, like, four to five enemies really fast and easy. And then it was just a matter of dealing. I think these are the two choppers that I had to deal with in this one. Uh, there is, I don't remember if there's four or, two, four or three choppers that you deal with, but... It's pretty easy, uh, just pretty much about killing the enemies as quickly as you possibly can and getting it done as quickly as you possibly can. So I think here it was just a matter of just getting rid of these choppers. And I think there was just like one more ad that I had to deal with and uh, we were able to take them out. So here we put that grenade down, take a look at these choppers, check out this awesome play right here. So we uh, that was a really bad shot, but this one right here, we tagged that one and then we tag, we tagged the other one and boom, we lay down. We know we're going to bring one down, and then we just hit another one, and boom, they're both dead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy right there. And then it's just a matter of finding that one extra enemy, because if you see it on the map, we still have like a little red dot right there that's still showing on the map. But other than that, there's not that many enemies now, so we should be good to go. Uh, and it's just a matter of ping him and finding out exactly where's that. So it's a flamethrower, the most annoying enemy there is, and uh, 
take him out, one tap him, and he's dead. And then you completed the operation in under 15 or 10 minutes. So like I said right there, I could have probably shaved off like at least one to two minutes from that run, and it would have been super easy, super fast. And like you see, it's not that overwhelming or super challenging. Once you know the mechanics, once you know the rhythm, and once you know the cues for the PG, you're not going to be rushing through it because you're going to know exactly when you guys should go and stop and when you should restart and get it done. So we did it in 1328. I think that was a pretty good run. Could have probably knocked down two minutes and had it like un like in 11. But other than that, it was actually a pretty good run. I hope you guys are finding these videos helpful and informative. If you are doing a huge favor, guys, drop a comment, drop a like. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you guys will not miss when our videos go live. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.